So we have Dave and Marcus here today from Mobitherm and we're going to be talking about uh, protective enclosures today in this video. We have just received this beautiful enclosure here out of Italy from Techno Video, one of our vendors that we're working with on a regular basis. And we have actually ordered this for a particular project we're going to be working on and we thought we'd share our experience with this enclosure with you guys so that you can see what it takes to put a thermal camera into an enclosure. So the, the most commonly used thermal cameras from FLIR um, that go into these enclosures are these um, microbolometer type cameras. We call them fixed mount cameras, uh, as in not handheld. Um, and they have an ethernet uh, connection on the back. So we have the A615 here. Um, it's kind of our flagship cameras. It's about a $20,000 camera with 640 by 480 pixel resolution. Then we have the A315, 320 by 240 pixel. It's about a $10,000 camera. And then we have the small guy, um, and it either is an A35 or an A65. Um, the 35 is 320 by 240. The 65 is um, 640 by 512. And uh, they cost about uh, five to $8,000, depending on model and lens option that you have with that. Okay, so uh, looking at these cameras, uh, I mean, they, they look fairly rugged. Uh, why do we need to even have an enclosure? Why can't we just mount the camera right like this? Yeah, that's a good question. So we get asked this a lot, like, why do I need an enclosure? So these cameras in Handley are typically used in, in rough industrial installations and um, typical environment is grimy, dusty, particles flying around. Um, there could also be water splashing um, and also, of course, heat. And um, even though these cameras do look quite rugged, and they are, but they are not um, really particularly protected against splashing or dust settling on the lens. So it's a good idea to protect the, the investment of a $20,000 camera properly to make sure that it lasts a long time. And um, that's why we have these protective enclosures for those kind of things. Okay, so tell me about this camera, or this enclosure over here. What, what, what? What exactly is, is this, this assembly on the back here? Yeah, so this, this enclosure comes with a, a special cooling option. This is actually a vortex tube. Um, and um, that allows us to connect uh, compressed air here. And it actually separates the compressed air into a hot air stream that comes out the top, up front here, and a cold air stream that goes, I'm going to turn this around, that goes into the back of the enclosure here. And the cold air basically takes the warm air from the enclosure inside and is being bled out out of these outlet ports uh, on the front and that has the advantage that it really makes sure that the cold air is going all the way through across the camera and exits the enclosure up front. So, so what kind of temperature ranges are we talking about with the, the vortex cooling? Yeah, so typically what we see, anything that goes over the um, operating temperature range of the camera, so typically as a ballpark figure, 50 degrees C or about 120, 122 F is the maximum allowable operating temperature of these cameras. So if you have an application where you're kind of in that vicinity, I would always suggest putting them into uh, a protective enclosure and add cooling. So the simplest form of cooling is really just putting the camera into an enclosure to begin with because it protects the, the camera already. But if you have a situation where you have already um, a permanent ambient temperature that is always present. Maybe you're close to um, some molten steel or close to a hot oven or something along those lines and you have a lot of convection heat coming, it will inevitably heat up the enclosure and the camera inside. So in that case, you need to do a forced cooling. Um, simplest version is to hook up some compressed air. The problem is you don't have much control over the compressed air. Um, so typically the compressed air in an industrial facility is around 75, 80 degrees and that's the best you can get. And then you run compressed air through this, um, but the cooling is not going to get any better than that. So the difference is with the vortex cooling option, you can now drop the available um, temperature of the compressed air um, between 30 to 90 degrees over what comes in. So if you have 80 degrees coming in, you can get this below freezing, which is not recommended, but I mean, that's the power of using a little vortex tube. Another cool thing about this is there's no moving parts in here, so there's no wear and tear. 
It's really just a mechanical design that separates cold and hot airflow from each other. And um, I have a little adjustment screw here where I can adjust the temperature um, and make sure that it doesn't get too cold, um, but also has enough cooling here that, that it keeps the camera in a, in a nice and, and a comfortable zone in terms of the operating temperature. Okay, now let's say you, you have some uh, a very hot environment and uh, the Vortex isn't going to do it. What, what options do we have available for that? Yeah, so that happens quite often as well. So we say as a rule of thumb, if you have a permanent temperature, let's say in the vicinity of 110 to maybe 150 on the high end, 140, 150, Vortex is still an option. Um, if it goes any warmer than that, then you definitely want to switch over to a cooled enclosure. We have those also available, they look very similar. The difference there is that we actually have a, a hermetically sealed enclosure that is a double walled design and um, like a radiator design, there, there's a tubing running zigzag through the enclosure and we actually connect cooling water to it. And again, you can just use regular cooling water from the plant or you can do one better and actually use an industrial chiller, cool the water down and actually get uh, you know much colder water through it. And the nice thing about using cooled water is that water is so much more efficient in cooling something than air ever can be. Um, so that, that will be a solution for something like that. Okay. Now I noticed on the front when you had this turned around, uh, that doesn't look like just regular glass on the front. Can you talk a little bit about that? Correct. So one thing to understand when using thermal cameras, um, these thermal cameras do not see visible light like the human eye in the 400 to, to 700 nanometer range. These actually see uh, long wave infrared radiation. So typically it ranges between 8 and 14 micrometers, very, very far long infrared uh, radiation. And uh, glass no longer transmit in that wavelength. So the manufacturers um, such as FLIR, they have to switch over to exotic materials. In this case, it's a germanium, um, which this glass window is as well. That's why they have this little sheen purplish kind of machine in front of it and, and you can actually, if you hold it up against the light, you cannot see through it whatsoever. And so you can actually not use regular glass because if you would, the camera would just see a black image, you would not see anything coming through. So this window is germanium in this case. A um, couple of other things about using germanium windows. Germanium is rather brittle, so um, care needs to be taken to make sure that the, that the glass is not going to get bumped and, and shattered. Uh, another thing is important that the window is properly coated with a, an anti-reflex coating for the wavelength that the camera is operating in, in this case 8 to 14 microns. Um, and um, that basically increases the transmission that we don't have so much of a loss uh, from, the, from the radiated energy reaching the camera. Um, and another nice thing about this particular enclosure with this particular window is it has a, a hard carbon coating. Um, what happens <coughs> with uh, germanium when it is exposed to the elements, it degrades over time. And if it doesn't have a hot carbon coating, um, you know, you may have to replace that window once a year, once a couple of months, depending on how harsh the environment is. And the problem is these windows cost uh, $1,200 to $1,500. So that's, a, that's an expensive proposition if you don't get the right coating on something like that. Right, right. Okay, I see you have some other bits and pieces over there. Can you talk yeah, about so let's talk about this nice little bracket here. So this is actually one of the options. We have many different ones. This is just the one, the wall mount bracket option that we have for our particular application because the customer wanted this to be mounted against the wall. This is a very, very rugged and sturdy mounting bracket. I have seen much worse with other manufacturers. This one is really, really heavy and rugged. Um, it is also stainless steel electro polished. You can see very nice job done on the weldments here. Uh, and there's not going to be any chance of flexing because this enclosure weighs, of course, quite a bit. Um, and you want to make sure that uh, if it's mounted outside, for example, that it doesn't uh, flex in the wind on the wind load or, or any sort of vibration. Then it has a, a swivel mounting bracket here, which is, has kind of a, a pan tilt function. I can, I can loosen up the screw and adjust the angle of the camera in terms of the uh, panning and, and um, tilting. And here's that tilt bracket up here so I can easily adjust uh, where the camera's facing at, which is very useful. And some really beefy screws on it so I can really tighten this down and don't have to worry about it coming loose. So again, we have the wall mount bracket option. 
We have pull mount, we have pedestal mount options, we have corner bracket options. So just let us know what sort of uh, preferences you guys have and, and we can equip these with uh, whatever bracket fits your application. There's another little accessory here. <clears throat> this is actually a little accessory that comes with this particular enclosure model. Uh, the thought is here, if it's already air-cooled, it's probably going to be in a dirty environment. Why not uh, making sure that we keep the dust and debris off the front? So this is a little air nozzle. Um, and this mounts up front here in these little mounting holes, just like this. And the nozzle faces uh, at about 50, 60 degrees and blows air straight onto the window. And it's just a little bit of an airflow that can be regulated with, a, with an air regulator, just to make sure that uh, it just creates a little steady puff um, and then we can either use this little barbed connector that comes with it um, if you just want to slip over a little hose or something like this it screws in here or we have this little quick release so that ships ready made just like that and with a couple of screws that move on, it's on there we also have all well, we have the accessories here side. we also have some cable glands that come with it and a couple of uh, plastic washers and some tools even to uh, make sure that we can mount uh, the cameras uh, inside. Well that looks great. Uh, can we have a look inside and see what it looks like? Uh, yeah sure. Let's, let's take this apart and uh, take a look inside. Okay. Okay so it looks like you, we've got it apart here. Uh, what, what exactly are we looking at here? Yeah, so I, I took this apart. It basically just slides out of the tube and um, it basically has a couple of components in here. So the, on the bottom side is really the, the mounting surface on the outside of the enclosure. And it's also coupled with a mounting bracket that slides on the inside of the enclosure, all in one piece, which is kind of comfortable um, and advantageous when you want to mount the camera or you actually want to service the camera. You can just pull everything out in one shot. And so, Let's talk about what we have here. So we have this, this mounting bracket right here that holds this vortex tube that's mounted all in one piece. So everything comes out and slides out in one piece, which is very nice. Then we have the, right now there's a couple of plastic plugs in here where the, the cable glands are gonna be. So if you only need one cable gland, then you can just use one, that's fine as well. And then the mounting bracket with a little lug here to connect the, an earth ground to it. And then we have a long slot here that uh, we can use to adjust uh, the camera position because some cameras are longer than others and depending on what sort of lenses they come with uh, it's, it's great to be able to just adjust the, the position of where the camera sits with respect to the front viewing window. So what is being shipped with is these little plastic um, washers. They come in different thicknesses and um, we can basically use them to put them on here and then the standard uh, quarter 20 screw just comes from the bottom and then uh, that just screws to the to the mount of the camera here which we just have here on the bottom and you know this basically just goes straight in there I just have to put this through it and then I just use one or two of these to just adjust the center point of the of the camera within the enclosure and it's fairly straightforward and then I just plug in my Ethernet cable my power cable and for a simple installation that's pretty much all I need if I if I need something else for instance if you have a situation where um, you have an outdoor installation where in the winter it gets very cold there's no need to have the vortex cool cooling option running um, you can put a thermostat in there and then basically turn uh, uh, the, the air supply off to the um, to the vortex tube and just basically just turn it off in the winter if it's cold enough already anyway and save a lot of money not blowing so much air through this uh, looks good. Yeah. So anyway, if you guys have any questions regarding protective enclosures for thermal cameras or regular cameras, um, do not hesitate to give us a call and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up if you like this video.